This video is brought to you by Brilliant. Today, the Czech government is in crisis. The suspected Trump gunman is charged and half a million Lebanese are displaced as Israel continues its strikes. From TLDR News, this is your daily briefing for Wednesday, the 25th of September, 2024. The Czech government is facing a crisis following the result of this weekend's regional elections, which saw a landslide victory for the opposition party and the exiting of a junior coalition partner. Former Prime Minister Andrei Babiš, ANO Opposition Party Association of Dissatisfied Citizens, won 10 out of the country's 13 regions, securing 35% of the vote and 292 seats out of the 685 available across the country a significant increase from ANO's 21% in the last regional elections in 2020. Meanwhile, the far-right SPD, or Freedom and Direct Democracy, and the Communist Party also performed better than expected, finishing in a tied fifth place with 32 seats each. This is all pretty bad news for the current government, a centre-right coalition led by Prime Minister Petra Fiala, which has had the lowest public support of any administration in Czechia since 2013. Following its terrible election results, Fiala yesterday proposed the dismissal of Regional Development and Digitization Minister Ivan Bartosz, who on Sunday resigned as chairman of his pirate party, which is a part of Bartosz's coalition, after losing almost all of its seats in the election. However, the nature of Bartosz's dismissal has stirred up trouble in an already fragile coalition. Fiala met with Bartosz in person on Tuesday to assure him no changes to government would be made, but only called him later to say that he was being fired. Bartosz seemed caught off guard, and he later accused Fiala of betrayal over the whole situation. The party is now reportedly considering leaving the coalition following Bartosz's ousting, who told Czech television yesterday it's the end of his party in the government. This would mean the departure of Foreign Minister Jan Lipavsky and Legislation Minister Michael Salamoun. Their departure still needs to be approved by an online referendum of the party members in the coming days, and this spat spells stormy days ahead for Fiala's government. There's more on the way, but remember to subscribe and ring the bell for more daily briefing tomorrow. Plus, if you want to support the channel like James Kay, then consider joining the TLDR Daily Membership Programme for just $1.99. U.S. prosecutors have charged Ryan Ruth with the attempted assassination of former President Donald Trump. Ruth was arrested on September the 15th after authorities said he pointed a rifle through a fence at Trump's Florida golf club. The indictment from Tuesday evening says that Ruth has been charged with the attempted assassination of a presidential candidate, and also adds three new counts to the weapons charge that Routh already faces, including possessing a firearm in furtherance of a violent crime and assaulting a federal officer. The attempted assassination charge carries a maximum sentence of life imprisonment. While Ruth has not yet entered a plea, the indictment comes after a court filing shows prosecutors alleging that Ruth had written a note months before the attempt in which he said that he intended to kill Trump. In an apparent preemption of his failure, Ruth allegedly wrote, I tried my best and gave it all the gumption I could muster, and offered $150,000 to anyone who could, quote, finish the job. Ruth's case, having been randomly assigned, is being handled by U.S. District Judge Eileen Cannon, a Trump-appointed judge who earlier this year threw out Trump's classified documents case. An estimated half a million people have been displaced in Lebanon and 569 killed, including 50 children, as Israel continues to carry out airstrikes on the country. Lebanon-based Hezbollah confirmed today that an Israeli strike had killed Ibrahim Kabezi, a senior commander of the group who was said to be the head of its missile and rocket force. Israel says it's carrying out extensive strikes against Hezbollah targets across Lebanon, including weapons storage facilities and launches. Meanwhile, Hezbollah says it launched a rocket at Israel's Mossad spy agency headquarters near Tel Aviv, which the Israeli military said was intercepted by its air defense systems, with no reported damage or casualties. With the UN Security Council meeting to discuss the situation, UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres said that Lebanon is at the brink. The people of Lebanon, the people of Israel, and the people of the world cannot afford Lebanon to become another Gaza. With thousands fleeing, mostly southern Lebanon, schools in Beirut and beyond have quickly repurposed to receive the newly displaced. 
Meanwhile, Lebanon's foreign minister says Lebanon cannot itself bring an end to the Israel-Hezbollah conflict, and that the US is the only country that can really make a difference in the Middle East and with regard to Lebanon, adding that Washington is the key to our salvation. Despite calls for an end to the violence and escalation, the international community is clearly preparing for things to get worse. The UK, for example, urged its citizens to leave Lebanon immediately and sent 700 troops to nearby Cyprus to be ready for an emergency evacuation. Meanwhile, in other news, world leaders have been gathering in New York to speak at the 79th United Nations General Assembly. The high-level event is a chance to discuss global issues and highlight their own country's priorities on an important stage, with Gaza and Lebanon among the hot topics. On Tuesday, Joe Biden gave his final such address as US president and warned that the world was at an inflection point. With the ongoing escalation between Israel and Hezbollah, Biden said that full-scale war is not in anyone's interest. He also sought to defend his foreign policy record and make the case for continuing robust support for Ukraine, saying that the world cannot look away from the war. In a separate speech, Iran's new president, Masoud Pazeshkian, said he wanted his country to play an effective and constructive role in the evolving global order. He also said that Iran was ready to engage with participants of the 2015 nuclear deal, which was abandoned by US President Donald Trump, and added that if the deal's commitments are implemented fully and in good faith, dialogue on other issues can follow. Pazeshkian also had harsh words for Israel, which he accused of desperate barbarism and said its bombardment of Lebanon cannot go unanswered. In other speeches, South Africa's President Cyril Ramaphosa called for UN Security Council reform to include an African voice, and Colombia's Gustavo Petro spoke on climate change, saying we need to choose between life or greed, between humankind or capital. And finally, in today's uplifting story, we discuss how Thailand became the first Southeast Asian country to recognize same-sex marriage. On Tuesday, the landmark marriage equality bill, which was approved by Thailand's Senate in June, was given royal endorsement. Thailand's recently appointed Prime Minister, Pei Tong Tan Shinawat, posted on X, congratulations on everyone's love, hashtag love wins. The law came off the back of two decades of campaigning by activists. Anne Chamaporn, who co-founded Bangkok's Pride Movement, told the BBC that it was a triumph of equality and human dignity, and that she plans to organise a mass wedding for more than 1,000 LGBTQ plus couples when the law comes into force on the 22nd of January 2025. What do the world's best politicians have in common? They're willing to learn something new every day. And if you think that sounds too hard or too time-consuming, or just too overwhelming for you to do, then you haven't tried Brilliant.org. Brilliant is where you learn by doing, with thousands of interactive lessons in maths, data analysis, programming, and AI. Like I said though, the real value here is that you can do this easily every day, truly committing to lifelong learning. Slowly, over time, you'll not only pick up new skills or get better at maths, but you'll also feel the satisfaction that comes with bettering yourself and staying ahead. For instance, if, like many world leaders, you want to get better at handling finances, you might want to check out the ton of new data science content Brilliant has just released, all of which uses real-world data to train you to see trends and make better informed decisions. They're perfect for learners of any level to start or continue learning data analysis, with a full suite of new content covering data visualizations, algorithms, regression models, and more. Plus, you can gain additional insight by working with real datasets from sources like Airbnb, Spotify, Starbucks, and more. To try everything Brilliant has to offer free for a full 30 days, click on the link in the description.